I actually, at the time I joined the Runaways, was learning was learning jazz scales and learning uh, how to compose classical. So I played a lot of different things. And then they said, oh, okay, you sound perfect. And I went in and did not impress. I think uh, they were playing very, very hard rock, which was the one thing I had not played. So yeah, I could play Stairway to Heaven. I could play The Needle and the Damage Done, but just screaming loud rock wasn't my thing. So we said, we parted ways, but um, I think the manager always kind of thought I would be a good addition to the band. So when they couldn't find a bass player and they needed one kind of desperately he called me up and said, can you play bass? And I said, I don't know, I've never done it, but it's the same first four strings as are on a guitar. So I can play the notes. He's like, great, come down and audition. And turns out I have a natural sense of rhythm and I was a better bass player than guitarist. Let's get real here. This has not been discussed, but I, I think it's pretty obvious that the reason was that our manager had raped me on New Year's Eve. And I don't think he, you know, this album was recorded shortly after that. Okay. This is after I don't think he wanted the, a reminder of that and people looking at him. And it was easier to make me uh, be faulty in some way so that the girls would be kind of against me or have a negative opinion of me rather than having me there and him being reminded that he had crossed a line. That I, you know, I never got to talk to him at the end. I did try to kind of say, okay, what happened that night? Was I always the, the target? Did you have another plan that went wrong? You know, was this a sudden thing? I, so I will never know, mm -hmm. but I think he, he definitely knew he had done something wrong and that he had transgressed a boundary he shouldn't have. And I had power over him, unfortunately, that I never recognized. And, but he knew it was there. And I don't think he wanted to face me any more than he had to. Okay. So I think that is the real reason because he can say, oh, I wasn't good enough at the time because I was still new. Well, then why did you bring me in the studio to teach Nigel Harrison my bass parts? Doesn't that up? Everything smelled like a, an excuse. Absolutely. And just mentioning what, what you said there about the, the rape. Um, how did you feel a few years ago when you, you finally got the courage to, to to tell your story? It's a difficult thing to to do. Um, and then your bandmates reacted the way they did. I mean, how how did that feel for you? Um, you know, it's hard to go back to the place where I was when I first came forward because I I felt sort of free in a way because um they no longer had that hanging over my head at, with we're gonna we're gonna out you and believe me there are a couple of them that did use that as a threat to try to get me to do things that they wanted me to do um which is a horrible feeling yeah. because people you really I'm going to say, if you know somebody who's been sexually assaulted, unless the person who did it is a continuing danger and you saying what happened is going to stop this continuing danger, you don't ever out somebody who has been the victim of a sexual assault. It's just that is a horrible, horrible feeling. Um, and it can make people it, it, it made me retreat further into my shell. It's like, I, I'm not going, because the way you're telling this is amplified to serve your ends. And that does not feel good. Mm -hmm. Once I talked about it, I didn't feel particularly good about having talked about it. I felt like I had done though something very good for other women. It, it varied. It be, and in part, because we had a manager who in trying to keep control was very much of the divide and conquer frame of mind. So he would do things that would keep us apart and kind of start little rumors. And, and if there was a division, you know, he would say he was trying to make it up, but he really wasn't. 
And he would come to me and he would say, oh, you're the second, you know, based on fan mail, you're the second most popular person in the band after Cherie. And I'm sure he was saying the same thing to everybody else in the band who wasn't Cherie. Um, and trying to make us all jealous of each other instead of trying to make us a cohesive unit. And there were a lot of drugs around, um, which some of the members of the band had a, a problem with. And drugs will make anybody more paranoid, less friendly, or you know, or friendly in an artificial way that's temporary. And I don't think we really had that voice that was there telling us how to be friends and how to get along and how to resolve disputes properly. And ultimately that was what drove us apart. It wasn't musical differences. It wasn't even um, a different approach to the business of the band. Really, it was drugs. Lita and Sheree did not get along. I mean, they've openly said this. They just did not get along. So I was able to be friends with one of them at a time. But if I was close to Sheree, Lita would not talk to me. And if I was close to Lita, Sheree wouldn't talk to me. So that could be very awkward. Mm -hmm. And Joan could be kind of a refuge at times, but she was more likely to be hanging out with Sandy. So, or, or to be hanging out with Sheree, at which point I'd go back to being friends with Lita. It was just kind of a changing, who are you friends with this week kind of a situation. And none of it was permanent or lasting, but it all added up. And, and I will tell you though, the only thing that I ever truly resented from the band, and, and I know this was something that Kim started, was them giving me shit about playing with a pick. It was kind of like real bass players don't play with a pick. They pluck with their fingers. And because I had been a guitarist, it was easier and more comfortable for me when I switched to continue playing with a pick. And I really had a complex about that. Wow. I mean, for up until like a couple of years ago, well, that's blown my mind to be honest. I've, I've spoke to, to lots of different bass players and, and there's a, a real wide variation in, in the way that people play, um, even thumb picks and things like that. So to, to, to have that hang up and uh, kind of imposed on you, just it's it's baffling. Yeah, especially as, as a 16, 17 yeah. year old girl. Now, what I would have liked was somebody to say, hey, would you like another yeah, another weapon in your arsenal of bass playing? I, you know, we're going to put you together with somebody who will show you how to play with your fingers if you want to, so you can have that sound as an alternate. I probably still would have continued to play mm -hmm. with a pick just because of how hard our sound was and, and what I needed to do to be heard over, uh, you know, Lita went to 11, always. <laughs> Sometimes she went to 12. <laughs> so if I wanted to be heard, I ended up playing um, through uh, an Ampeg guitar amp to have a punchier sound so that it wouldn't just be muddy and lost in the mix because we didn't really have a sound person. We had a roadie or a manager who was doing sound and they were not necessarily the best at it, especially because we were playing at too loud a stage volume and there wasn't much that you can do with it or that you can do with it when that happens. So it would have been nice to have had a way to vary it up, but instead I was just trying to be like this punching sound that you could hear over the mud and um so yeah a pick was much better for that i had to sit back for a while and say okay what is it that makes me happy what do i like to do i kind of like i like making deals i like that side of it i don't like the people though that i'm making deals with they're they, they're just, they are dog eat dog people. Mm -hmm. And is this who I want to spend my day around? And I decided I didn't, I ended up retiring and I started, um, I started being kind of the teenager I'd never gotten to be. Yeah. And that was this nerdy game playing, um, kind of put, you know, book reading person. And I started doing that and I suddenly found I didn't have very much money, but I was happy for the first time in my life, you know? And it was like, hmm, maybe there's something to this. And uh, I started playing board games kind of on a, through a series of accidents, discovered that I really, really like them 
And one day looked up and I was not satisfied by something that I think because there's the dreaded five player count. Most games are designed to be played between two and four players. Yes. And if you end up having, you know, six people show up to game day, that's great. You split into two groups of three, or you now have enough to play a, a decent party game. But when you get five, it's just terrible. And there aren't a lot of games. So I went, I'm going to design a game, the game that I want on my shelf that isn't there. And it's one that plays very quickly, even when there are five people. So people aren't pulling out their phones and checking their emails and it's, it's a European style strategy game, which is what my group likes and what I like, but it's going to feel like a, like a so-called Ameritrash kind of game, which is heavy on theme and there's some, oh, what's going to happen and, and just has a fun factor. And I thought, well, how can I do this? And I said, I know I was in a band. People are always asking me what that was like. Here, I'm going to give you the experience. So I created a game, which currently is called Rock Hard 1977. Whether that will keep that name, I don't know. And uh, it's about what it's like to be a band in a band back in the day, where you start out, you're working your regular job, trying to save enough money for rehearsal space, get better at what you do, build up a reputation, write some original songs, start playing larger and larger venues, get a manager, a record deal, make the big time and have some fun while you're at it. At least you can see, there we go. you get a little amplifier oh, yeah, yeah. is the player mat and you've got different characters. So it's, it is a lot of fun. Yeah. 